Well, good morning again, everybody, and welcome back to another short issue of You and Me and Multiple Sclerosis. And I have been um, quiet for a while, haven't had any new videos posted. Shame on me, but I do still have things that I can share, and I think that would be a good thing to do. So I better get back in on the stick here and get going. Anyway, I thought I'd start out this one, which is going to be about um, ignoring ignoring your limitations with multiple sclerosis. And um, I kind of, I just for fun wanted to start out just showing this picture because it's um, kind of an interesting one. This is me 60 years ago, 60 plus years ago, when I was just a baby. And you know, as a baby, I didn't have a clue that what my life would be. I had no reason to expect that there would be limitations because I kind of didn't even understand what those were. And as I got older, I realized I a lot of things. But <laughs> but I was just thinking about, you know, being a baby that you you're kind of naive, right? You, you learn things the hard way. You fall down a lot. You hurt yourself. You come up against problems you can't solve. All kinds of things. So having MS in a way is like starting out as a baby all over again. Because you have to learn what your body will do and what it won't do. And thinking about that, I realized, okay, you know, in the past few months, six months-ish, I've had a couple of falls, and that's kind of rare for me. I don't fall that often. I I, thought I kind of prided myself, actually, on being pretty good at how I fell, too, so that I wouldn't get hurt. I would, you know, land on my behind or something, or fall onto a soft piece of furniture, and, well, these ones that I had in the past six months, they were not of that caliber at all. One in particular was um, I, we were out in front of our house and I was walking down the sidewalk and I was carrying something. It was kind of a windy day as it tends to be around here and um, the item dropped from my hand which also happens a lot if I'm not actually paying attention to what my hands are doing. Who knows what they'll do. Maybe you can relate to that. But anyway, I dropped it, and it was a little breezy, and I thought, oh, no, if I don't get that, it's going to scoot down the sidewalk and be gone before I can get it again. I didn't want that to happen, so without even thinking about it, I bent down <laughs> to pick it up, just like a normal person would do, right? Well, I think you can imagine that that is not what happened. I was not able to pick it up. Instead, I joined the object on the ground. And unfortunately, I didn't fall very well. I ended up smacking my cheekbone on the sidewalk. <laughs> Which, and that smarted, let me tell you. Oh, by the way, as a little tip and trick for you, you could try putting Vicks Vapor Rub on the spot. Soon after it happens, after you get done with your ice pack to get the swelling down, because apparently Vicks Vapor Rub can reduce the bruising that you get. And I really kind of didn't want to have it look like my husband socked me in the face, so I tried that, and amazingly enough, it did work, which was good. Um, but I'm sharing that just in case you want to try it yourself. I know that. It doesn't always work. I have a friend who tried it for a bruise and it kind of didn't work for her. So maybe it's like when you catch the bruise or what it is or anything. But anyway, okay, so I had a couple of falls and big bummer, right? But I was thinking about falling and how it even relates to life in general. And I got two lessons out of this that I thought I'd share really quickly for falling with MS and why you fall and how you should think about things so that you maybe don't do that anymore and how that relates to life. And so anyway, with MS, I think the two main reasons that I fall 
are number one, I try to do things too quickly. And I think that example that I gave of trying to bend down and pick up the object that had fallen and falling instead, that was, a, that was an example of where I really felt like, oh no, if I don't bend down right away and pick that thing up before it blows down the sidewalk, I'll lose it. Well, number one, is that really that important? Number two, my husband could have gone down and gotten it for me, I'm sure. But, you know, you just don't think sometimes. <laughs> you just think, okay, I can do this real quick. Bend over. I, w I would have been able to do that years ago, right? It was a perfectly normal thing to do. But it was something I tried to do too quickly. I think I might have been able to do that exact same action if I had time, you know, stopped, thought about it, took my time, I might have been able to do it, but I certainly couldn't do it quickly. So that's one example, one or one lesson that I learned from MS. And I think it also applies to life. Oftentimes, when we try to do something and it doesn't turn out very well, it's because we tried to do it too quickly either because we weren't really ready and hadn't really thought it through, or the people that we were hoping would get on board with our idea, they weren't ready, and maybe we ignored that. You know, we just tried to go too fast. And so I think that is maybe number one. Number one for, for not falling in life or in MS, don't try to do it too fast. And the second thing is a little bit more, I don't know, I guess it, up to every individual. By the way, I'm sorry about this reflection on my glasses. I'm not really sure what to do about that. But the second thing is that we try to ignore the realities of our limitations. And you know, when you have a mess, every day you live with it, you know, you know what you can and cannot do but you sometimes overstep that and not because you're going too fast but because you just think i can do this i i know how to do this i will be able to so maybe you're up on a a step ladder not very high i hope that's never a good idea with ms by the way if you get too far off the ground that's never a good idea but um you might be on a, say, like a two-step step ladder, and the thing that you want to reach is not quite, you know, right above you. You have to bend, you have to kind of lean over to get it. I'm telling you right now, no, no, no. Don't do that. You're going to be sorry. <laughs> it's going to be spectacular. Things may get broken. You may get broken. It's not worth it. So you can probably think of examples in your own life where you just were determined to get away with doing something that you knew in your heart you shouldn't really be doing. And don't you think that's also true in life? That sometimes when we fail, it's because we try to do stuff that we know in our heart of hearts is beyond what we're really able to do. We take on a project. We make a commitment, whatever it might be, you know, but you know in your heart of hearts it's just not going to go well, but you try it anyway. And spectacular fail, and there may be damage of all kinds. <laughs> the, the aftermath is not usually pretty. But I have to tell you that it isn't um, necessarily the lesson here that okay forget it sit in a chair never do anything or you know wrap yourself in uh, bubble wrap because you know you don't want to get hurt i think life is about getting hurt life is about falling and failing but it's not the failing and the falling that's important it's the follow-through it's what happens after that do you pick yourself up and say well okay, that was dumb, or that didn't really work very well, and I'm going to do better next time. I'm going to remember this for next time. I'm going to learn from it, and I'm going to take that lesson. I'm going to apply it in my life, and I am not going to make that same mistake again. Well, okay, so I needed that reminder. That falling on the sidewalk thing, that wasn't fun. 
it hurt yeah i still have the scrape on my knee it's kind of being ridiculous and not wanting to heal but i learned from that that okay i realized why i fell i'm not going to do it that way i'm going to be more careful and it's been a good three months since i've had another fall but if i do fall i'm still going to get up and try again i think that's so important with any kind of chronic illness or disability or life problem don't quit don't ever quit you might want to take a different tack try something different or ask for help but don't quit that's so critical i think to our happiness to having some kind of a life and just as a final thing i wanted to tell you that this last weekend i went out and i um i entered my buick in the local car show i had been wanting to do that and i did it and here it is the 69 buick skylark convertible that i've had since 1981 or two or something and um, i've been wanting for a long time to show it so here it is and here i am cane and all having just a great time so it was a big moment for me to be able to do that as you can see <laughs> i'm standing but um, it's an awfully hot day and that you can't see in the picture but you might be able to surmise it why am i wearing a sweater well because i'm silly that way i didn't want to get sunburned but also it was earlier in the day so it wasn't quite so bad so that's why i'm doing it but i really should you know i, I was going to be taking that off pretty quickly <laughs> that was so fun but you know, it wasn't without its perils. First of all, it was hot. And we're talking about a Buick from 1969. It's a convertible. There's no air conditioning except for what, you know, <laughs> the convertible top. But when it's sunny and it's in the 90s, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, was maybe not the smartest idea. Thankfully, my husband was there. He did the driving. And we found the, the probably the only shade on the whole street to put the car under. And we sat in the shade. It was still really hot anyway. And I didn't dare drink anything because I would not have been able to walk to a restroom even if one was nearby and there was none nearby. So I did. I took a huge risk the, this weekend to enter the car in the show given the conditions. But you see what I did. It was it was calculated. I thought about it ahead of time and I said, okay, here's the thing that needs to happen in order for me to be successful. I had to have my husband help me a lot. I had to have my cane, absolutely. I don't always use my cane, but that day I certainly did. And when when you're hot, I know probably most of you with MS would agree with this, it's like the circuits get fried, right? And it's like all of a sudden you, you you try and stand up. You've got your cane. You're pushing on it. You get yourself in an upright position. And then the legs are saying, you want me to do what? You want me to do what? But I kind of had to at one point. So it was, it was, um, it, yeah, I made it. Let's just say that. I didn't fall and I didn't collapse. I used a ton of sunscreen. And I just did everything I could to stay cool, but I could, didn't dare drink any water. So, yeah, but I thought of that, too. I thought, okay, let's not get ourselves in a situation where we absolutely have to get to a bathroom because it is not going to happen. Well, we talked about it afterwards, and next year we do it again. If it's that hot, we have extra precautions that we're going to be taking to keep me from getting overheated. So... I guess that's the bottom line. Don't quit. Well, everyone, have a wonderful day. I was glad to finally be getting to talk to you again. I'll see you next time.